the Mohawk Institute, a former residential school in Brantford, Ontario, now at the centre of a national reckoning. I'm a Mohawk from Six Nations. I was sent here in February of 1957. Roberta Hill arrived here when she was just six years old, a little girl about to be exposed to the brutality of Canada's residential school system. So this is the... This is the, where they imprisoned the uh, runaways. This place was known as the mush hole after the mushy food served up. Even in, in our own community, the people, the, the guys now will tell you that that was one of the threats. Is if you didn't behave as a kid, you'll get sent to the mush hole. You know, the mush hole to us was like a scary thought. It's not a good place. So it was always in a kid's mind. <laughs> What's this mush hole? 139 residential schools operated from the 1870s until the 1990s. They were set up by the state and run mainly by the churches. And in 2015, Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission concluded their operation was part of a policy of cultural genocide. 150,000 Indigenous children were channeled through the schools. These Canada's stolen generations. Essentially, you start thinking about it and it is enforced assimilation, indoctrination, re-education camps. You know, we change the words and suddenly the reality of those children's experience becomes very clear to us. The children were used as forced labourers and say they were subjected to physical and sexual abuse by their guardians. Took me by the hand and took me over to his office and sat me on his lap and, and that's where the sexual abuse started with him putting his hand in my underwear and touching me and then it just escalated to a lot worse where I don't even like to say those things but it got worse. It took the discovery of more than 200 unmarked graves on the grounds of a former residential school at Kamloops in British Columbia to finally open Canada's eyes to a disturbing truth. Thousands of the kids never made it home from the residential schools. I think we should safely assume that children died from violence. Children died from neglect. Children died from illness. Scott Hamilton's report, Where Are the Children Buried? for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, concluded that many children were likely buried on school grounds, never returned to their families. There was a flurry of chest beating and shock and horror, but it kind of just disappeared. And... Then the Kamloops story broke and it had such stark, dramatic impact that it kind of shocked a general public into an awareness that this stuff is real. This is just not a historic footnote. I'll come and hold out one there when you get it. Since the discovery of unmarked graves at Kamloops, the grounds of former residential schools across Canada have become potential crime scenes. What happened to our children in that building was atrocious. So that's why we're here. We're investigating to uncover that. And if there are perpetrators still out there, they, they will be criminally charged. The work involves the use of ground penetrating radar. So we can zoom in on it. You see how you can start to see the images. It's a painstaking and mentally draining job because this is personal. The emotions are too much. They're too intense because everybody working here is a descendant of the survivor or the survivor. And since uh, my grandmother went here, I, I think about her a lot and it's tough. 15,000 children passed through the Mohawk Institute, many of them from the nearby Six Nations Reservation, among them Geronimo Henry. I got here when I was uh, six years old and in 1942, 
and I left in uh, 53 or the 17. By that time, he didn't want to know himself anymore. When I was at the school, like, uh, my name was Jerome. Right. Yeah, that's, but I got it changed when I got out. Why's that? I didn't like that guy, Jerome. He went through too much uh, trauma. Geronimo was also stripped of his culture. He took us down, uh, down the hallway and took us in this room and uh, sat us in these chairs and uh, they cut all our hair off. Tonight's special council meeting is exclusively dedicated to a very I am from Oshwigan, and I live at the place of the fire. The survivors have come to ask Brantford Council to release all documents from their archives which could help find the children who never came home. Good evening. Can you hear me? 86-year-old Geronimo Henry now speaks for those who can't. And my uh, goal, I think, in life is, like the rest of my life, is to try and get justice for all, all the kids that went to the residential schools. The meeting is hereby formally adjourned. It's a small step forward, but the survivors want more from the churches and the state. You want to be um, reconciled? Then hand over those documents. Hand over anything that is associated with this school. For this community, only when the children are found can the healing begin. And we will give them uh, like a uh, like a real burial. Like we'll send them on their way to the spirit world. Like you know. But so the way we believe traditional people is that they're still there. You know, the, the spirit is still there. It, it will be done in the right way. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.